Awesome. Instagram Live Kettlebell Clinic. Very good. So uh, today we are getting ready to crush our Kettlebell Swing 101. And uh, this, is, this is fun because we coach pieces of it, but we often don't put it all together this way. And so let's talk about um, what we're trying to accomplish with a kettlebell swing anyway. And um, what we're trying to do is use a kettlebell uh, the, to train the hinge and create strength and power in a, in a good hinge pattern. And so we're going to first talk about uh, safety in terms of your pillar, your hinge, your foot position, and then your lats. And if you got that stuff, you got a pretty safe and potentially very powerful kettlebell swing. So Bootsy's going to stand right here. And uh, go ahead and face uh, over there. So the, the, the pillar position, this is sort of, you can't have a, a hip hinge. You can't bend over at the hip if, you're, if you don't have a good pillar or core because you're going to arch your back or uh, round your back without a good, solid, strong core position. So Bootsy's standing right here. And so she's got a, a, a gentle arch in her back. So she's going to gently squeeze her glutes and drop her rib cage just a little bit. And yeah, she creates that sort of rounded position. But what she's doing, when you depress the rib cage, she's activating her obliques. So she's creating uh, a flat spine. Her obliques are on now controlling her pelvic position and her, uh, her, the position of her rib cage. So between those two points, she has control of her spine. So with that pillar position in place, she's going to be able to breathe in through her nose and her belly will expand as she inhales. So she's got that breath and it's not coming up here into the neck, it's coming into the belly. So already we have good breathing, we have good spinal posture, the pillar is complete or at least the pillar is begun. Now we're going to talk about how that pillar applies into a good hinge. So Bootsy is going to drop into the hinge maintaining that pillar position. Nice. And so you can see butt comes back, knees bend, and the, the hinge is mostly a crease at the hip. The spine doesn't really change at all. Now she might feel tension in her obliques or because her abs are on right now. She might feel tension in her hamstrings. And when you're hip hinging correctly, you're going to feel this in the posterior chain. So from the glutes to the hamstring to the calves, even down to the soles of the feet, creating that tension on the back, but without loading that lumbar spine too much. So this is a great hip hinge. And she could even um, create more of a dramatic hinge by bending her knees a little bit more and, and getting a little bit lower. But right now, all, all you need for a successful hinge is tw a 20 degree bend at the knees. But she could bend the knees a lot more and still be fine. But she, her, her geometry doesn't really require that. So she's not going to worry too much about it. Um, go ahead and stand up for a second, get a little break. So we've got a pillar position where your spine is flat, tucked down, everything's neutral. You've got a hinge uh, that, that is executed really well. Now let's talk about the feet. So Bootsy, go ahead and face the front, take a tiny step back. So what our feet are doing when we're doing a kettlebell swing is we're gonna have pressure in the ball of the big toe, the ball of the pinky toe, and the heel all at the same time. And uh, the if you want a really detailed version of this, you can read Athlete's Guide to Knee Pain by Anthony Michael. Talks a lot about the tripod of the foot, but go ahead and go into your hip hinge. So her knees are bent, and her pressure is here in the ball of the big toe, in the ball of the pinky toe, and in the heel all at the same time. So the feet are so important because if you only have pressure in one place, so watch, rock back onto your heels. If you lean backwards, if, 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 you're, if you're leaning back for balance and stability, her back is rounded, she's not strong, she can't pick up heavy weight or be powerful here because it's an unstable position. So we always want to make sure the feet are grounded and you're not overly reliant on one part of the foot. And so while we're here looking at the feet, we want to have that tripod pushed into the ground. But 
we also want the toe to either be pointing straight ahead or gently out to 20, 20 degrees. And that's a great beginning position for a swing. Now, Bootsy's feet are a little bit narrow for me, but for somebody with smaller hips, that might be a perfect position for you as you're, as you're doing your kettlebell swings. And we'll get into how you correct that or, or uh, customize that a little bit later. But toe position up to 20 degrees out. Ball of the pinky toe, ball of the heel, or uh, the, the heel of the foot, the ball of the uh, big toe, all pushing into the ground at the same time um, for that perfect, really well-grounded hinge position. So those are the, covered the pillar, the hinge, the foot position, and now we're gonna talk about the lats because that's a big part of a strong kettlebell swing is what are your lats doing? So, uh, to, and this is just to, to in, the, in the most basic level, the lats are gonna be the, the uh, bridge between the shoulder and the hip, and that's gonna create tension on the downswing of your kettlebell swing. Go ahead and face this way, Bootsy. And it's, it's gonna be one of the awesome large super muscles that's gonna get trained during this exercise. And to start off, all you need to do to make sure your lats are, are involved with this is do what Pavel used to call the anti-shrug. So arms locked, pushing the shoulders down towards the earth, and, and, and pushing your hands into the floor away from you. And what that's gonna do is, behind you here, create a straight line into your center of gravity. Armpits, the muscles in your armpits are tight and there's, your, your shoulders are not rising up into your neck. And when you do, go to do your swing, your lats will automatically be recruited. They're automatically in the correct position. And we'll talk about how to even um, get in deeper and tighten them further, but if you're doing that, if you're doing the anti-shrug, you're already starting from, the, uh, from such a great spot because the proper muscles are already activated and your neck's not being loaded. So we have all these things, the pillar of the core, the hip hinge, foot position, and the anti-shrug going at the same time. Now we're going to practice some movements that allow us to put that all together so that it's really easy to be successful and powerful in our kettlebell swings. And this is a training for Warriors Portland. We warm up with this uh, very, very frequently. Just because whether you've been doing it for a decade or you're doing it for one day, it doesn't hurt to re reform the fundamentals. So, Bootsy's already stepping in front of the kettlebell. Her feet are gonna be a little bit wide so she can clear her kettlebell swing. And her, she's creating that tripod, the pillars in, in action. So her abs are on, she's getting the anti-shrug, shoulders are coming away from the ears. And what she's gonna do, she's gonna keep her chest up and her butt back as she hinges out and she's gonna touch the handle of that kettlebell. Notice how she's got a, a 20 degree bend at the knee, hips are above the knee, but below the shoulders. Go ahead and drop the hips a little bit more. There you go. And then she's gonna drive up like she's cracking a walnut in her glutes and boom, standing tall. So she's gonna to touch and, and stand back up 10 times. As she drops into the hinge, she's looking for her abs to be on, glutes to be firing on the way up. She should feel this in her hamstrings. Because of the extreme position of the kettlebell, she's gonna to have to hinge a little bit deeper, get lower, and have much more range, a greater range of motion that she'll, than she'll need. Because when she's doing her swings, the kettlebell won't be behind her like that or below her like that. But what this is doing, it's forcing her to try to gently stretch into that position and get a, a greater range of motion. Now, she's going to stand over the kettlebell, same exact foot position. So she's doing everything the same. Now she doesn't have to reach as far. Now go ahead and tap and stand up. Boom, it's a lot easier. She doesn't have to reach and stretch for it, but she can continue to warm up the hamstrings, the glutes, all the muscles in the side of the body and the back of the body. So she does that for another 10 reps. And what she's doing is she's finding her feet, making sure her pressure, the pressure's in the correct spot so that when she goes to do her swings, that she doesn't have to reorient and everything is already primed for the proper position. Notice the knees, they travel a little bit, but not too much. The knees can travel and move forward, but, but not too much forward. Now what she's gonna do is, she's gonna do some kettlebell deadlifts in the exact same pattern that we've been doing as she's warming up. Now she's actually going to pick up her kettlebell. So she's got some loading now. Good. She's do executing the anti-shrug. And notice when the lats are on, 
there uh, and you're, you're, you're pushing your hands towards the floor, you still get that great lat tension even though your arms aren't in alignment with your body anymore, but it's allowing her to practice keeping those lats on as she goes deep into the hinge and is strong on the deadlift, which is, has a lot of carryover to the swing, which we're about to practice. So she's loaded everything. She could feel the tension. Now she's going to set, up a, uh, uh, set herself up for the perfect kettlebell swing. So before we, here, rest for a second. So we practiced the hinge. We've done a little weight. Now she's going to practice one of the most important skills, which is beginning the swing. So she saw, she already set it up. She put the kettlebell out in front of her. She tilted it back towards her. She dropped her hips into position. I, like now my, she has that repetition. All the muscles are already, I know what's going on. I'm activating. So she doesn't have, we don't have to narrate or correct as much. So go ahead and do one perfect swing and set it down. So she's going to hike it, explode, and then set it right back down. So the only thing we're, you know, the, the only thing we're adding is she's hiking it off the ground tossing it like she's trying to throw it to somebody back behind her. She's throwing it underneath her legs and then she's standing up and all those muscles fire that are already primed. Boom, she's off to the races. So give me four more perfect uh, sing singles, just like that. So we're going to do a few more singles just to get the, that get the mechanics down. She's throwing it. She's locking up those hips with prejudice at the top, just really just snapping it up. Nice. And then she's looking at her feet and she's wanting to make sure they stay grounded into the floor. Now, a lot of us, we're gonna have preferences and we'll talk about this as we actually get into our swing, putting your mind in your feet, making sure you're not leaning forward, falling back, whatever, coming out to the side. But you can start to see as you go through your warm-up process where you're tight, where things are, 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 may not be firing as well. So this is educational for you. You can identify problems before you get a bunch of reps in with a really heavy weight, which is ideal. All right, so now we're going to do 10 perfect swings to put it all together and, uh, and see how it flows. So she's sitting back, going to get ready to hike it. Belly's tight. Good. Lats are on, and she's off to the races. Throwing it. Boom. Lock it out the hip. Boom. Nice. So she's, the hips are drifting back. She's letting that kettlebell pull her over. She's going deep into a hinge. She's got great hamstring mobility. Her chest is coming way forward, but not below her hips. So she's still at a really good angle. Uh, but even at the, at the apex of that movement, maybe 60, 70 degrees, but she's not in an L. Her head isn't below her hips, uh, but she's staying tight, keeping that tension in the hamstrings, lats, abs. Those are the primary muscles that we're trying to train while we do, uh, while we do the kettlebell swing. So. If you can maintain your pillar position, keep the, keep the anti-shrug, keep your foot position strong, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that your spine is, and your neck is safe while you're doing these kettlebell swings and all the proper muscle groups are being trained. So you're getting more results. You're getting better results out of the work that you're doing with less, like, you know, le uh, less exposure to injury or, uh, or, or training stresses. And, when you practice those just the way we did, not in a hurry, uh, doing those warm-ups properly, focusing on the fundamentals, you get better and better and better, which will then allow you to break down into those, those places, get into those uh, areas where you need to work specifically so that your swing becomes more powerful, and then every rep that you put in makes you uh, a better athlete, gets you better results, and fundamentally grows your skill set as you're on your journey to train. So that's those are the basics. Let's go. Uh, let's go into uh, a little bit of 202. So let's go a little bit deeper on um, uh, on positioning uh, with the the lats, the necks. So if you're already good on the basics, you're already good on the fundamentals, and you're like, all right, Josh, this is all old hat. Well, super cool. What I want you to do is. Think about how to make your swing and your hinge more powerful. One of the things I see a lot, uh-oh, we got a train coming by. Oh, it doesn't matter. One of the things I see a lot is, my microphone's gonna cut that on <laughs> anyway, is people, people are reliant on uh, the hip hinge 
so much so that they leave out their legs and their quads and they don't get all the power that they could. So show me a deep 90 degree hip hinge, Bootsy. Okay, now what I want you to do is bend your knees, drop your hips down and let your chest come up. Not that low, a little bit more, higher chest, higher hips, reach your hips back, more, there you go. So with a, just a little bit of, of changing in the ge geometry, Bootsy can recruit her quads to, be, to help her with explosive power here uh, versus really relying on a pure hamstring. It's just a, exactly the same, go ahead and stand up, exactly the same as if you're doing like um, a, a, a stiff, a, a stiff-legged RDL versus a true deadlift. Like a stiff-legged RDL, you only have some muscles, specifically the hamstrings and low back. But a, a full-on deadlift where you're bending the knees and getting low, it allows you to recruit more. Same thing with the swing. So when you're, when you're doing your swings, video yourself, challenge yourself to see what percentage of your movements coming from the hip versus the leg. It's not 100% in zero, right? It should be 60-40, 70-30, depending on your geometry and how, or your anthropometry, the, the, the length of your femur and your shin. But let's play with Bootsy's swing a little bit to make it, see if we can make it more powerful. All right, so give me five reps here real quick. Boom, blam, blam, good, awesome. Okay, first of all, really good. Now all we're gonna do is, when that kettlebell pulls you underneath, you're gonna soften the knees, so you're gonna bend the knees just a little bit and, and allow it to pull you just a little bit deeper, but with some knee bend, so let's see it. Boom, <laughs> boom. Nice, there you go, just a little bit more. Yeah, it's awkward, right? Yeah. You feel like you're gonna fall over. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so uh, this goes back to like how grounded are your feet like, and, and whether or not your tripod is keeping you anchored. Because if you make an adjustment, like you bend your knee a little bit more, you go a little bit deeper, and you're leaning, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be revealed where you're, uh, uh, like, like where you're unstable, because you're gonna go in that direction. So uh, when Bootsy started to bend her knees a little bit and got deeper into that hinge and, uh, and moved a little bit further, it became highly unstable. So you have to play with it. Where do you feel the stress in your body? Uh, right now, my feet. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Like she, uh, Bootsy's like, I can feel, the, I can feel the, the stress in the muscles in my feet when I'm doing my swing, which is a great way to be. That means she's being really active. And so feel free to sw do your swings with your, uh, like with your shoes off in you know, barefoot or in socks. You can feel the muscles of your feet grabbing the floor. That will help a lot. Now, let's talk about hamstring tension and maximizing this. So, um, so go into, go into a, a deadlift. In fact, yeah, you can grab that because it'll help you, right? So when you're loading up your kettlebell swing, so, uh, Reach your, you can reach your hips down and back like you're getting into a, a swing position. Do you feel hamstring tension? Please. Nice. So what Bootsy's doing is she's reaching her butt back behind her center of gravity while she has pressure in the front of her feet and bend in the knees. And so it's really easy to assume a very similar position and not feel that, that strain in the belly of your hamstring. So when you're setting up, Challenge yourself to increase the tension. Now, here's what I want you to do, Bootsy. I want you to, you're gonna, you're gonna continue to do this, so you're gonna, gonna do a swing, but before you start, I want you to, to gently drop your hips a little bit further and reach them back. There you go, nice. Feel how that bowstring is loading? Yeah. So just in that little tiny drop of the hips, she lengthens that spine and creates, creates a little bit more tension in the hamstring. All right, 10 reps, go. Boom. Boom, and then now you know the sensation. Once you do that, you know what sensation you're looking for to come back and create over and over again. Nice. So, yeah. increasing the hamstring tension at the base. If you have a good start position, typically you're gonna have a good end position. Now, let's talk about necks for a second. So get in the position. 
So, got a good base. Hips are back. Hamstrings are tight. Now what you're going to do is, actually stand up so we can get a really good visual on this. So, in order to avoid loading your neck, one, your lats have to be on. And to keep your neck in a neutral position, it's not looking down or looking up. It's sort of pretending you've got a, a tennis ball and you're going to give yourself a double chin. You're going to grip that tennis ball and pull it into your, into your neck and chest. Nice. So you're, you have a little space. You're not, you don't want to have no space. We also don't want to lift that neck and chin and uh, expose that spine to unnecessary extension. There's a lot of reasons for that and I won't get into them, but let's look at how we do that in the swing. So she's going to load, get down, get ready, load up, give herself that double chin and she's going to start to drag her shoulder, yeah, down and corkscrew that, that, those lats uh, bring those shoulders into the rib cage, and when she does that, that immediately takes tension away from the neck and the C7, T1 vertebrae up here, puts that tension in the upper back, which is awesome. That's exactly where we want it. And, and the last but definitely not least, Bootsy's going to uh, bend, the, bend that handle of the kettlebell. Those that those elbows are going to begin to point forward. So she's getting into a really strong neutral position. The upper quarter, upper back is really loaded. Now go ahead and fire out five. Boom. Lock it out. Boom. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Woo. At, yeah. It takes tremendous energy to focus. So when you're, when you're getting into these details, Pick one thing that you need to work on and dive deep into that so that your posture gets better, so that your training gets better, and your power gets better in the swing and in the other hinge positions that require the, the, the similar sequences of recruitment. So we've got the percentage of hinge that comes from the hip versus the knee, how much hamstring tension you're, you're getting into in the base of your, of your swing. We've got the length of the neck, and neck position, lat tension, hands, corkscrewing, opening up the jar, bending the bar, bending the handle, however you want to refer to it, whatever cue means something to you, and, um, and all of those things working in tandem to create a better experience. So you've got plenty of stuff to work on, and always, always, always start with the basics and give yourself some time in your, in your warm-up. You should be doing some uh, some light warm-ups if you're doing a lot of swings and, and uh, stuff with the kettlebell. You should always be doing three, four, five, you know, six sets of warm-ups uh, so that you can practice and rehearse these things. And if you have any issues, you want to identify them with that lighter weight. That way you're not doing the 100-pound swing and really uh, getting yourself out of whack when you might have been able to fix that, uh, that training problem or that technical problem a little bit earlier. Hope that was helpful. Uh, for those of you who missed part of this, we'll be recording it. And uh, if you need to, to see the, uh, the video again, well, we'll send it out to anybody. Just DM me if you want to check that out online a little bit later on YouTube. Continue to train hard. Continue to build muscle, burn fat, and bring forth the warrior within. Yeah. <laughs>